packed house here at the Moody Center, and it is loud. Houston going on the road, and every night on the road is a challenge in the Big 12. As jump ball is won by Javier Francis, Houston controls. Early in games, they've gone to Juwan Roberts inside. Let's see. Here they go. Roberts coming off a solid game in the win against Kansas State. Ace Smith steps in the lane, steals it, and now will dribble it out. And they'll set it up. Two point guards for Texas. They take the heat off each other, and they'll need to do that tonight against this defense. Ace Smith with the ball, and he can really score, and he's got... As good a defender as there is on him in Jamal Shedd. Desue gives off Hunter. Shot clock is under 10. Mitchell with the shot clock winding down, looking for space. And he hits! He's made some serious improvement this year. As we take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by CDW, Shedd, Cryer, and Sharp, along with Roberts and Francis. Sharp, Cryer, and Shed a lot to deal with. There's Cryer, the Baylor transfer. Off the mark, offensive rebound, and Roberts was fouled. He'll go to the line. You will say that a lot tonight. Offensive rebound. This is one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball. Ironically, John, they're one of the shortest teams in college basketball. Yeah, Kelvin Sampson's team a bit undersized, but don't discount him with that great, great wingspan. Sampson loves this guy, Jawan Roberts. One of Sampson's all-time favorites while coaching at Houston. That's right. And he went to high school just right up I-35 in Killeen, where he lived with his aunt because he's a native of St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Coming off 14 points and six rebounds against K-State. The average is a little over eight and seven. Tied up two apiece, just getting started here. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla, and Chris Budden. Horton wide open, and flying in for the rebound is Roberts. Both of these teams are heavy pick and roll teams, so pick and roll coverages tonight are gonna be critical. Shed switched hands as he went off the opposite foot and flipped it in. To the corner, Ace Smith. Yeah, the rebound is pulled down by Francis. Roberts is a very good passer from here. Keep an eye on him now. Roberts working on DeSue, finds Cryer to the corner, Sharp. And now Aismas. Well, he's already scored as many points against Houston as he did last season when he played at ORU. The lowest point performance of his career, three points. He got three right there. Breyer left his feet, now gets it back. Shed will try. That was deflected. Ace Miss double team finds Mitchell. Jumper. Houston down a point, going the other way. Jamal Shed, Fran mentioned. Grew up about 10 miles from here, his grandmother's house nearby. That went off the window, Francis a little bit short, and Mitchell corrals and pushes it up. Love him rebounding and pushing it, did it twice now. Oh! Mitchell off the feed from DeSue and couldn't throw it down. And then an offensive foul to go the other way in Texas basketball. You don't see this very often. This kid might be as good an athlete as there is in this league and just got a bad start on that jump. Missed it and kind of smiling about it. Now, John, Shed just picked up an offensive foul. And that's critical because he has to stay out of foul trouble tonight. In a game at TCU recently, he got two quick ones and it killed 
the momentum of that game for the Cougars. Arguably the top two teams in the conference, Houston and Kansas, one thing they share in common, not a lot of depth. Oh, you're right. And a couple key guys that have to stay on the floor. Yaquil Horton. And this jumper was short. Loose ball. And eventually it's Roberts coming down with it. Now Sharp. And they're going to keep playing through Roberts. They really like to do this early in games. Cryer wide open. Good look in and out. Pass deflected, and it will be Texas basketball when we return. Longhorns in the early going with a one-point advantage. ESPN 4 with the basketball. They'll inbound to the baseline. John, I feel something good for the Longhorns tonight. Kansas State was knocked out in the first three minutes of that game on Saturday, but the Longhorns, to me, have challenged the Cougs with the same kind of physicality that you need to play with. Turnover. Sharp has it. Texas coming off a loss on the road on Saturday at BYU. Sharp hands off, and now it's shed. Kick out Cryer. Good look at it. And he hits. That's terrific. These two guys have been playing against each other since third grade. Two Houston kids who have reunited this year with Cryer coming back home from Baylor. Horton being harassed. The shed pops out. Now Ace Miss. To what Fran was talking to, Shed and Cry have known each other since the third grade when they've been playing against AAU. But there's Max Aizman, sorry. He uh, first popped up on everybody's radar back in 2021. He might have busted your bracket up against Ohio State when he dropped 29 points. Well, he popped on Trey Young's radar, and Trey said, hey, come work out with me this summer. They went out to California and got to hang out and learned a lot from Young during that process. That's pretty cool, and obviously a guy that could teach him a lot. Ace Miss a little bit undersized like Young. And there is Brock Cunningham knocking it down. I got permission to say 30. He wears his age in his back. <laughs> well, he's made for this game. We talked to him today at the shoot-around. He was really excited because he is Mr. Longhorn. And he brings the intensity. This is Tugler with DeSue on him. Oh, Left hand, that's move, smooth. John. Did we watch them work on that all morning when we were here? He's a freshman who does not turn 19 until next May. And he's out here in this grown man game. DeSue back out. And that one deflected. So no over and back. Ace miss corrals. Left hand. Couldn't finish. Damian Dunn here, the Temple transfer. He had a good game on Saturday. Yep, he's figuring out Cougar culture. Took a while. A couple months. Watch the eyes of Roberts. Always searching. There you go. Finds Tugler. A little strong with that shot. Nice look. Good feed up ahead. And Cunningham. No call. That's knocked out of bounds. Watch Joe Tugler now. He comes out of that assembly line of Houston Cougar big man Carlton and Fabian White and the late Reggie Cheney. This is a terrific move for a right-handed young post player. He will get better and better in this program. He's getting coached right now. Another one of, one of their guys with that big-time wingspan like Francis. And like Roberts. And the Weaver into the game for the Longhorns. Cunningham being harassed. Kate Chedrick. The Virginia transfer had just two points in the game against BYU in 10 minutes. They're going to need his size and his strength tonight along with some scoring. Now that's not a good shot. Way off balance for Dunn. It'll go the other way. And Texas basketball. 
All right, coming up, Super Tuesday on ESPN. Start 7 Eastern, number 3, North Carolina, taking on Georgia Tech. And then at 9, it'll be Oklahoma State and number 8, Kansas. And the finale, it'll be at 11 Eastern, Loyola Marymount and Gonzaga. Oklahoma State. There are only six freshman starters in the Big 12 out of 70 starters. Oklahoma State's got two of them. Eric Daly Jr. and Brandon Garrison, two very promising players. Yeah, Garrison, really Big. impressive. Yes, sir. Good hands by Sharp, steps in. And they go possession arrow, it'll stay Texas. 12.48 to go here in the first half. And a battle between... Interstate rivals Texas and Houston. These two teams part of the old Southwest Conference. A lot of Texas kids in this game, as uh, we've seen through the years. Great, great, great high school basketball. Uh oh. They move the ball nicely. Find A. Smith. Had a good look. Uh, Dunn pulls down the rebound. Dunn's got to get his head up because uh, Sharp was ahead of the field. Shed inside and puts it in. Jamal Shed averaging about 12 points a game. He's their top assist guy at about six a game. And obviously an elite level defender. Yeah, and when he needs to get 20, he can get 20. Ultimate floor general. Out of bounds, and it'll be Houston basketball. One of the things that Houston did last year to uh, Max Aismas is they've got three good perimeter defenders, and so they just switch on ball screens or handoffs. And that time, Shed handed it off, I think, to Cryer, and then Cryer handed it off to Dunn. I, I, will, I will tell you this, Max has been even better at Texas than I expected, John. We know he scored a lot at ORU in the Summit League, but he's had some big moments for this Longhorn team. Ryer looking for some space, feeding Francis, turnover. Ace miss inside, it rolls out. Cryer up ahead to Shed. Shed at the basket. Timeout on the court. And a battle between these two schools. Houston on the road, leading by a point. Finds its way to the Big 12. And now that Kelvin Sampson is in the league, I think they're going to do a great job of continuing to clean up on that talent. And he knows all about the Big 12 from his time at Oklahoma. See, they'll do a lot of switching out front, so Ace Miss will see different bodies. Beat inside to Sue, a good position. A couple of ball fakes, and it gets rejected. That's because Francis stayed on his feet. He never jumped until Sue jumped. Shed looking for some help, or I should say Dunn looking for some help. Find Shed, hits. That's a good job by Dunn, because he would have taken that tough shot about a month ago. And then Shed can make tough shots. I, this kid, John, is such a winner. He is the prototype coach's point guard. Sue misses the mark. Shed give off Cryer. Look at that. Is Great that rebound by Francis. I'm just telling you, man. They treat the missed shot like it's their own. Well, Caden Jedrick just came back and sat on the bench. He went with a medical trainer to go work on what appears to be a kind of a re-aggravation of a back injury that he sustained against Texas Tech. You can see him there in some pain. He's got a black heated wrap around his back during the timeout, was stretching, constantly jumping back out on the bench now. Guy that gives him size and you know, the neighborhood of 18, 19 minutes a game. Roberts inside. And they get a foul on Texas. And John, let me get back to that missed shot theory. Kelvin Sampson tells his team, 
that we prepare for failure. And what he means by that is when we miss a shot, we still have a chance to score because we are so good on the offensive glass. Shot clock is under 10. Shed. Shed a little short, and a rebound pulled down by Horton. Asked Jamal Shed, where did you learn to play defense? He said, from watching my brother. Inside, and a nice move there from Tyrese Hunter. As Chris pointed out, the son of military people, and he picked a place that he knew would coach him hard. Yeah, his brother Jalen played at Washington State, among other schools. He move inside, but Roberts could not get it to go. And they get a foul inside. That'll be on Francis. I like the aggressiveness of Texas. Ne neither team is scoring yet at a high rate, but watch Tyrese right here go to the other side of the rim, and we call that a little PhD right here. Proper hand development. Look at the spin off the glass. Nicely done by the young man from Racine, Wisconsin. And if you remember, he is a freshman at Iowa State, was the Big 12 deep rookie of the year, freshman of the year. Sharp almost with a steal there. John, they're going to trap every ball screen. Weaver hoist, and that one off the mark, and eventually Francis comes down with it, and now it's Shed. I asked Jamal Shed, if you hadn't gone to Houston, where do you think you would have gone? He said, probably Colorado State. How about that? So they've got a great point guard right now, Isaiah Stevens. Talking about one of the top ten guards in all of college basketball, and he has really developed over time. Small shit. All right, Thursday night, some Big 12 women's college basketball coming at you. Number 12, Texas. Number 13, Baylor. It comes your way at 8:30 Eastern on uh, ESPN. Yeah, Texas playing without the great Rory Harmon, another Houston player. Rory out for the year with an ACL. She is the TJ Ford of. Uh, Texas Longhorn women's basketball. That's a big blow to them this season. Really good pressure by Hunter. Pryor's not getting any looks. That's from Keith. Oh, and Shed knocks it down over the contest of Kendall Weaver. He is in the mix to me to be an All-American point guard. Tristan Newton at UConn has been tremendous. Prior on that, they go to the possession arrow, and it belongs to Texas. I told you, John, when he needs to score, he can. And right here, he just catches Weaver falling asleep. But when you talk about Tristan Newton, Taman Lipsy, Kolick, Boo Booey from Northwestern, Jamal Shedd, the thing that separates those guys, it's about winning first. Yeah, he's impressive as a leader. And on both ends of the court. Dessou, shot contested. Mitchell picks it up, can't put it home. And a rebound eventually goes to Houston. Cougars on the move. Pryor puts it in. Timeout, Texas. And Houston leading it. 747 to go here. First half. It is 18-12. For Big 12 player of the year. You look at the guards in this one. Cryer, Shed, Hunter, Ace Miss. That's the battle here tonight. And so far, Houston leading it by six. We're going to see three of my candidates on Saturday. Kevin McCullough and Hunter Dickinson certainly having great seasons for the Jayhawks. Smith gives off to Cunningham, back to Cunningham. Pryor steals it up ahead and puts it in. There's a good example. Switch and then a lazy pass and a steal. They are keeping Aismith in front of the defense. Aismith back out to Cunningham. 
Tyrese Hunter with Sharp on him. Now they find Mitchell to the corner. Cunningham. Side of the backboard. Shed the Cougars setting it up. Inside, and that one put home by Jawan Roberts. Houston on a 9 0 run. And uh, vintage defense, John, wouldn't you say? No question. Cunningham, good find. Mitchell to throw down. Well, he missed the dunk earlier in the game. He left no question with that one. He made up for it. Trier. Great rebound tracked down by Tugler. Now Sharp got it. Emmanuel Sharp. Who has been in a slump. Last four games shooting 21% yep. and averaging about seven points a game. The average is 12, so they need him to be better. And there's Cunningham off the glass and good. Dreyer wide open. Can't hit. He's had some good looks at it here in the first half. LJ Cryer, he's three for eight from the floor with seven points. Chris Bud, what do you have? Boog, during that last time out, Rodney Terry telling his team, we have to be able to finish shots. When you take it up, don't be afraid to make contact. Force them to foul. Get to the line. One other thing, when we saw Kaden Shedrick with the uh, wrap around his back, dealing with muscle spasms, he is going to return to the game. Yeah, Texas has not gotten to the free throw line here in this one. Cryer puts it home, and LJ Cryer now with nine. Well, hey, this is two games in a row. He had some great looks on Saturday in a game they didn't need him to score. That's that's money. He has been shooting really well from out there. It's pursuit. Double dribble. And a turnover Texas basketball back to LJ Cryer. Uh, watch LJ Cryer. We talked about uh, the great Max A. Smith and his scoring ability at the college level. How about a guy that scored 3,488 points in high school? Fifth more, in the, fifth most in the history of Texas and the most in the city of Houston and the surrounding environment. Yeah, for a couple of years, I felt like it was hard to say LJ Cryer's name without saying Adam Flagler's name. I Just know. the two of them together were so potent, both ends. And obviously Cryer from nearby Katie, nearby in Houston, transferring from Baylor to Houston. And that's a huge three for NPL Horton. He's been around the block at a number of schools. One thing he does, he can shoot it. Shed jump stop. Shedrick takes it away. Ace miss. Whoa. Horton ball fake. The Sioux couldn't finish. They had a couple of opportunities. A wide open look from three, and then DeSue's chance at the putback, and instead they come up empty. Four to go here first half, and Houston with the ball up by eight. Crowd has been alive here at the Moody Center. Wow. Oh, inside and Francis to throw down. If you haven't seen this young man this season, he's from that assembly line of big guys. He is athletic, great defender, and what a finish that time by the young man from New Orleans. Loose ball, and eventually Houston comes up with it. Sharp. Shed gives off. Feed to Wilson. Good ball movement. They use the numbers and get the deuce, and the lead is 12. And it's a it's a 12-point lead because they got on the floor at the other end, and they're going to get more 50-50 balls than you will. Largest lead of the game. 
Texas has got to respond with some toughness. Ace Miss shot maker. That shot contested by Jamal Shedd, but it still goes down. Ace Miss with five. Texas down in this one. John, I think Texas has to toughen up, man. They're getting outworked, and they have the capability of playing hard. Smith hesitates, kicks out to Sue. <laughs> Texas three for 12 from three. One of the things Houston does really well, they defend the three. Opponents shooting in the neighborhood at 28%. John, they defend everything well. Yeah, fair enough. You friend. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but you're certainly right. You don't get a lot of easy looks. Shot clock under 10. Under two to go first half. Shed going to work. Jumper. Got it. Ooh. Well, when the guy known for his defense is doing that offensively, look out. Yep. He's, he's got 11. He, he's the coach on the floor. He knows what the team needs. Super engaging. You said Kelvin Sampson took a couple of days off. He could coach them during practice. Nice move right there. As... To Sue able to get the bucket. Now Dylan's averaging 18 and 5 in Big 12 play. I think Texas has to get to the locker room and decide they're going to play as hard as Houston. And they're capable of it. Sharp inside at the basket. That's tipped out. And Hunter. And a foul on the floor. Timeout on the court. Houston leading it by 10. Right, so here's what happened so far in this one. The combo shed fire with 20 of Houston's 33. And the Cougars dominating in the paint. Plus Texas shooting just 35%. And I think if Texas wants to get back in this game, John, they got to match the physicality of this Houston team. Sharp able to corral it. Longhorns without a free throw attempt in the first half. But Houston does a great job of playing physically without fouling. They are as sound as defense as you will ever see. Jed being harassed, the double team coming. And then he turns it over. He takes the blame for it. Big basket now. Big possession for Texas. Roddy Terry's team needing a hoop. Thirty-three twenty-three. And Ace Smith and company will hold for the last shot. If there's a ball screen, there's going to be a trap. Hunter, good feed, and Shedrick throws it down. Nice high percentage bucket to finish that first half. So Houston, the number four team in the country. From the pick and roll. They need more from Max Aismas for sure. Five points on two of seven shooting. Meanwhile, Jamal Shed in that first half with 11 points to lead all scores. In 18 minutes. Delvin Sampson's back NBA background always have something good as a set play coming out of the break. Sharp from the corner, feed from Shed. Right on cue. That's what we call a little flare screen over the top. Great execution. Remember, he spent six seasons in the NBA with Greg Popovich, Scott Skiles, and Kevin McHale. And a foul on Houston. Kelvin told us, John, last week, that his six years in the NBA was like a PhD in basketball. He was a good coach in college, but he learned so much about basketball being with those uh, great coaches. It was fun watching him go through shoot-around today and just talking about 
the need for efficient communication. Talking about communicating to your teammate and trying to do it in three words as opposed to six because it's loud. Your brain has to process a lot. Yep. It's just the type of stuff you don't hear a lot. Well, he's a professor of basketball. He really is. Hunter back to DeSue, flips it up, and in, and one. Well, Porter Moser, the coach at Oklahoma, describes this guy as a three-level scorer. Post-ups, three-point shots, but probably his best offense is in the mid-range right there. Missed their first nine games with an injured left foot that he suffered in the NCAA tournament last year, had surgery. He debuted against LSU. I asked him, when did you start to feel right? He said the Cincinnati game. So it took him a little while. Yes, it did. Eight months of, of rehab, to your point. There's that flare screen again. Shad finds Cryer in the corner the same way he found Sharp. That's great coaching right there. They ran a flare screen for Sharp and Cryer, and they got exactly what they wanted. Great look as they find Acemas cutting to the goal, and he puts it in. It's funny, they got that same backdoor cut against BYU on Saturday, and it works because you have to pressure A. Smith on the three-point line. Roberts from Francis, and the block on Texas. A. Smith stepped in. Remember the new rule this year, you have to be planted before the gather, and he's still moving. So no argument from Texas right there. Can't be. Max was sliding to his right. Jed going to work on Hunter. Great look. And then the two-man game inside. Francis finds Roberts. How good is that? How good is that passing, John? They baited the double team, and then they just played two-on-one. That's nice. Shot clock under 10. Five on the shot clock. Texas ball out of bounds. Rodney Terry, first full season as head coach, was interim coach. And then officially at the end of their final eight run on his 55th birthday, was named their full-time coach. He's had head coaching stops at UTEP and Fresno State. home as Acemas drills it a three over Cryer. He only had two field goals in the first half, John. If they're going to win this game, Max has got to play like Max. And I'd say the same about the Sioux. Francis with the Sioux on him. Shot clock under 10. Damian Dunn. Done from the elbow. Roberts had it, lost it. Texas basketball trying to chip away at an eight-point deficit. There's that pressure we talked about. They trap it as much as they can. Horton finds Mitchell for the throwdown. When you trap the ball and you don't get anything out of it, you better get back to the second side of the court. Push off on Francis. Foul on Houston. It'll go the other way. Now, you know the Cougars are going to trap the ball, so watch. Max gets rid of it. They swing it. And that's an easy basket right there. Textbook. Offense right there by the Longhorns. 
Malshed was on the bench, I think, for about a half a minute. And now he's back out onto the court. Yeah, I don't know why he came out, but when he did come out, he spent about 30 seconds talking to his head coach. That last foul, by the way, on Javier Francis, and he's got three. Roberts blocks that one out of bounds. It stays with Texas. John Chambi, Fran Priscilla, and Chris Budden here in Austin, Texas from Moody Center. And I like Texas's response to first three and a half minutes. A. Smith's looking for some space out of bounds, and he turns it over. And A. Smith with a, a word or two for Keith Kimball. Veteran crew here, Kip Kissinger, Keith Kimball, Roger Ayers. And they're as good as there is, and we haven't mentioned them tonight. I know they'd like it to stay that way. Prior jump stop, puts it up. That one chipped out. Shed goes and tracks it down to the corner. Roberts, and it's stripped away. Horton weaving through traffic gets to Hunter. Flip ahead to Sue. And the way to go. Timeout Houston. And the Hordes within four. Start to the second half. The Texas John, we talked about intensity, and they brought it in the first five minutes. Well, here at Moody Center, got ourselves a good one. A four point Houston advantage. Cougars with the ball. And their dynamic duo of Cryer and Shed have led them here tonight. Roberts banging against DeSue. Score the basket. Timeout on the court. And we'll take it with them. To get back to Austin. And Frank Hayes, who was on Rick Barnes' staff at Texas, said, if you ever want to work at Texas, you can't go to OU, and we may have an opening soon. They did. Four months later, Barnes was hi hired Terry to come to Texas. Last time he saw Samson after that, he went up and he said, listen, I'm sorry. He said, listen, our team, you got to do what you got to do. You're back home. Congratulations. And, and they've remained friends ever since. And, Chris, I talked to Rick Barnes yesterday, and he said, no way they would have let me hire a guy from Oklahoma. So I think RT, as they call him, did the right thing. Hunter from deep. Got it! And they're within three. 11,313 is sellout tonight at Moody Center. Shed can't answer. Tuckler with the rebound. That is unbelievable. But that is vintage Cougar offensive basketball crashing the glass. Prior the air ball. Texas can tie it with a three. Tugler able to grab it. I like the response from Texas. First six minutes of the second half. Dunk can't hit, and underneath, Roberts with a big rebound, and he's fouled. Well, watch this rebound. You think that was good? Watch the freshman, 18 years old, and that is great hustle saving. Now, they do this every single day in practice. It's part of their DNA, and you're watching a young man, Joe Tugler. I mentioned earlier, John, not a lot of freshmen are playing a lot of minutes in this league, and he's getting about 40% of uh, the Cougars' minutes each game. He's six seven. The wingspan is seven six. He's a top one hundred recruit for the ESPN one hundred. Roberts off the mark with that one. That's not the most impressive thing about the Tugler family, because mom Barbara played college basketball. She's six one. 
She has a 6-5 wingspan. Pretty good. One out of two for Jawan Roberts. The deficit is four for Texas. 13 and a half to go here, second half. Inside, and that rattles in and out for Kendall Weaver. Sneed with the bigger Mitchell on him. Roberts inside, little strong. And a foul on Roberts. NBA Wednesday coming at you, 8.30 Eastern on ABC. It's the Suns and the Nets, and then at 10 Eastern, over on ESPN, it'll be the Bucks and the Blazers. NBA countdown tips off tonight, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. And congratulations to former S an offensive foul. Former Cougar Tajay Moore, who just signed with the Blazers, and uh, terrific young man, going to get an opportunity to play in the NBA. A foul on Dylan DeSue. Jamal Shedd did such a good job trying to get around that yep. screen and then got bumped on the hip. We say a guy like him is unscreenable, and uh, DeSue just tried to get a piece yeah. of him. It's, it almost is true yeah. with Shedd. Sharp. Look at look at this play. Did you see Tugler right there? Shed. And now Ace miss. Texas down by four. Have to take advantage of the fact that the Cougars have gone cold. Houston won for their last ten. Ace miss pulls up and hits. And Ace miss with a dozen. Sue steps in and it's knocked out of bounds. Our under 12 timeout. A good one here in Austin. A two point game. Cougars on top. As he should, as highly recruited coming out of ORU with that fifth year. He's a Dallas kid, Jesuit high school. You heard of Jordan Speed. Same school that produced a great golfer. Well coached there by Chris Hill, the son of former NBA coach Bob Hill. Jed hesitates at the basket, off the glass and in. And Jed with his first two of the second half. Now you get the feeling that when he has to score, as we said in the first half, he can do that. He may take this game over with his scoring. They switch, and now Shed is on Shedrick. Mitchell. Tip out, rebound, Texas, Mitchell, and one! Well, we said Texas had to get more aggressive. Watch Shedrick on the backside, keep this ball alive, and then the finish by Mitchell. This young man has had a great sophomore season, averaging nearly a double-double. He was a top six recruit in the ESPN 100. Javier Francis, by the way, now with four fouls, so he's going to have to sit for a bit. Last year, Dylan Mitchell was in witness protection. They, he played and started every game, but he basically didn't really do much. And he would start, and then both he and Tyrese Hunter... Winning time, as Rodney Terry talked about, they would not be in the game. Two-point game here. Ace miss. Give off. Mitchell puts it home and retired. Kendall Weaver 
just skying for that rebound. Now Hunter weaving inside, give off Mitchell. And point blank couldn't hit, but he's fouled. I want you, I want you to watch Kendall Weaver, the transfer from UTA. We talked about toughness to start the second half. This kid is correct. There you go. Yep. Mitchell not able to hit. It stays a two-point Texas advantage. Good one here in Austin. Here's something new. How about Weavers trying to deny Shed and he got the ball back? If I'm Rodney Terry, I take the ball out of Shed's hands. Play four on four. He's got it back. Shed going to work inside left hand, puts it home. Why? Because he came and got the ball. And then at the other end, Shed with the assignment to guard Aceves. Weaver spinning inside and draws the contact. Well, Weaver did a good job coming up the floor, not letting Shed touch it. But now he's got it, and he's at Shed's mercy right there. Watch him get downhill. Finish with that left hand. Remember how many layups we watched them make over a few practices? Every day they finish right hand, left hand layups like it's uh, it's like taking vitamins. Yeah, that scoring has jumped here in this one. He's got 15. And Weaver able to hit 75% free throw shooter, the sophomore. Coming off a good game at BYU, 15 points. And he started to find his way into the rotation. And holy cow, is he athletic, right? Yes, he is. Double team. Well, they're giving Shed a little bit of his own medicine because Shedrick is going to trap him out at midcourt and try to make him give the ball up. It's not a bad strategy, but you don't want to foul him either. I feel like I should have talked to Jamal Shed and Caden Shedrick pregame about not being near each other because it, it makes it challenging on the play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> Shedrick on Shed. Shedrick. Shari. You should have shed something. <laughs> Cryer looking for some help. Gets it to Tugler. Shot clock is under 10. Shed sees it. Goes with the basket and has it blocked. He lost his footing and then had it knocked away. Texas trying to add to a one-point advantage. Longhorns are down eight at the break. A Smith give off. And Weaver puts it home. Crowd has been a factor in this one. Longhorns have given them something to cheer about in the second half. Yeah, no doubt. Well, the crowd has stayed energized. Shed. Shedrick the rebound. Ace miss up ahead. DeSue steps into it. Scored more the second half, 29 to 25. And red hot from the floor against the top defensive team, maybe in the country. What I love about this is that the Sioux and Aceness have stepped up to the challenge. 19 second half points. Roberts inside, and he gets fouled. That's a foul on the floor. 8.03 to go here, second half. John Shambi, Fran Priscilla, and Chris Button. Shed to inbound. And 
gets it to Tugler. This team could use LJ Cryer making a couple threes. Roberts had it blocked. Shed out to Sharp. Ball fake. Jumper. And that's tipped out prior to Shed. Well, they were 5 for 19 before that three off the loose ball. Hunter to DeSue. Contested. Blocked. Robbie Terry wanted a call. I don't know. That looked good, man. Shed wide open. How about and this we're guy? Tied. There's a six-letter word for a guy like that, and it starts with W. It's called winner. Shedrick. Did you see Joe Tugler right there? Shedrick's got to box him out, even though Shedrick's on offense. Jamal Shed with 21. Sharp will try and hit Emmanuel Sharp. And the Cougs have the lead. He's got nine. Is you get the ball in the post to the big and to look opposite and it's something yeah. that Roberts has done very well He's gotten better every year John. He was not this kind of offensive player Remember he's a five-year Culture guy a 9-0 Houston run and they're back in front A Smith feeds to Mitchell And they get the foul Keith Kimball with the foul on Shed. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. It's a must have for Big 12 fans. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern. It's number 23, Oklahoma against K State. Wednesday night, 7 Eastern. Baylor and UCF, Cincinnati and West Virginia. If you're a Big 12 fan, you've got to have it. Sign up today. ESPN Plus.com slash Big 12 now. Mitchell rattles it home. Chris Budden, what about Rodney Terry last time out? Reinforcing to his guys, we have to continue to commit to rebounding. Also, Dylan Dazoon, using his voice, he's become the vocal leader on this team after all the other guys left last year. Dazoon trying to tell us, we have to play together. Houston right now, plus five on the boards in this one. So Texas trying to make up some rebounding ground to Chris Budden's point. Shot clock under 10. Shed pulls up off the window and good. He's got 23. That's amazing. Uh, he knows he has to take over because cryer has gone cold. Sharp's been okay. Yasu's spinning and hitting. After a very quiet first half, Dylan Desu starting to heat up. Where else would you rather be? Roberts finds Tugler. Tugler can't hit. And Weaver the rebound and gets raked across the face. Kendall Weaver. Went from his high school in Mansfield to UTA, UT Arlington. I believe he was the rack whack rookie of the year. Rodney Terry watched him in high school. They didn't have a spot for him then, but he's going to be a very valuable role player here in Texas. Brand can confirm whack rookie of the year. 10 points a game on 40% from three. 
And here he is at the line. Can't hit the free throw. That's a big miss. Houston by a point under five to go here in Austin. Sharp into the paint. Lob knocked away. Texas ball. Hunter with Cryer on him. Spinning. And Sharp able to track it down. And a tough shot. Two tough shots. One on each end. Watch Tyrese Hunter spin here. Trying to get by Cryer. And he loses his balance. And Tyrese last year battled cramps seemingly the whole season. He put that to bed in the offseason. Cougars by a point. Shot clock under 10, knocked away, Mitchell. And it'll be Texas basketball. Great one here in Austin. Houston ranked to the top 25. And John, keep in mind, Texas has two home losses already. Cannot afford a third one. This is a critical 350. The Sioux off the mark and the rebound pulled down by Francis. Remember, Francis was sitting with four fouls. Sports Center with SVP coming up at the conclusion of this game. Right now, Texas without Tyrese Hunter, who has some cramps in his right calf. It's the same issue he dealt with last year. He was dealing with it again, that same calf in the Baylor game. Fringe, what you were talking about, they thought they had this fix over the offseason through his diet. Last year, he would drink so much water on game day, he would gain eight pounds. Wow. Prior being harassed. So no Tyrese Hunter dealing with those cramps. Inside Roberts rattles in and out. DeSue rebound. Yeah, that's a tough shot right there. DeSue did a really good job of walling up and using his length. Roberts knocks Acemas to the ground. And Max Acemas will go to the line a brilliant free throw shooter yeah he did a really good job he knew shed would get through the screen but he ran right into roberts who was not legally set these are pretty automatic don't you think and Tyrese Hunter back into the game. Brock Cunningham will sit. 59 apiece, 312 to go. Ace miss. Wow. Misses. A wow. rare miss for a guy shooting 90% from the line. And we stay locked up at 59. Let's see what we got out of a timeout. Look at Weaver. You don't want to foul here. Next foul is in a bonus. Shed from the free throw line. Ace miss has it. Texas has really battled on the glass in the second half. Mitchell grabs and goes. Puts it in. And Roberts down and in pain. That gives them another scorer on the court on the perimeter.
Shed finds Cryer. Weaver's got to be careful, not pick up a cheap one. Kendall Weaver, though, playing big minutes here in winning time. That's got right. his hands in the way, and they get a foul on Shed. I don't know that there's a better, better example of why coaches say, hands up, hands up. He didn't even see it, and he got his hands on and, it. Watch. And there's another reason this kid plays. Watch this. That is a great basketball play by a young man that never thought he'd be playing in the Big 12 a year ago. And then Shed commits the foul. Rodney Terry's group down eight at the half. And coming out in the second half with a flurry. And right now leading it by three. Make it four. Shed pulls up, rolls it home, and one. I almost think in that last uh, free throw, Kelvin Sampson called Shed over to the sideline. It's almost like he said, will you take over this game? Take a look right here. Gets into the mid paint. Little head fake contact. And he shoots a line drive that bounces in, John. Shed at the stripe. 73% free throw shooter this year. Career 76%. Can hit, rebound for Houston and a foul on Texas as Francis got hit. Well, here's a pro tip. When you play Houston, you better block out on the defensive end on the free throw because they are relentless, and you cannot, in a game like this, give up a rebound like that. Same thing here. This ball has a chance to be missed. Francis gets the first. Houston within one. And we're tied. Kelvin Sampson just saying to Jamal Shed, hey, one stop, baby. Ace miss with Shed on him. Jamal Shed said no way. Yeah. He just picked up his fourth. But you know what, John? I love the aggressiveness of Ace Miss there. When you have a guy guarding you that way and you're in the bonus, you got to attack the defense. Miss hits Texas with the lead. And they're up by two. One thirty-nine to go. So Shed with four fouls. That bears watching. And how about this? Dylan Mitchell's going to guard Shed right now. That's six foot eight. Shed goes baseline, blocked, offensive rebound, put back and won. Wow. What a sequence. You know what we call that? Houston basketball. Shed was going to throw it down, missed it, got his rebound, and Jawan Roberts, the two culture warriors, get it done on this end. What a play. Wow. Roberts the putback and now a chance to give the Cougs the lead. Still tied, 65 apiece. 
Man with the ball's got two game winners this season. Ace Miss lost his footing briefly. Watch the handoff here. Feed to Mitchell. Flips it up. Wouldn't fall. Francis rebounds. Let's see what Kelvin does. I don't think he'll go two for one, but he might. NBA style. Shed with a game high 25. Jumper short. Hunter. Shed intercepts it. I think Calvin Sampson wants a timeout. And Houston calls time. 65 apiece. Back in 30. Wouldn't be surprised to see if Shed takes it down to the wire and then maybe creates and kicks to his buddy, his roommate. He's going to throw this ball into the backboard and come get it. So here we go. Tied at 65. And the senior point guard has it, Jamal Shedd. Shot clock at five. Shed. Shed. Jumper. Air ball. Kelvin wanted him to drive this ball. They put Aismas in a switch situation. Keep an eye on this because Tyrese Hunter. Watch, watch Hunter here and watch a pitch back. Aismas the inbound with the bigger Francis harassing. To Sue Aismas. Aismas has a look at it. And yeah, we're going over time. The regulation time. We'll see how it plays out here. It'll be DeSue and Francis to jump it up. Kip Kissinger to throw it in the air. Houston wins the tip. Shed controls. The ball has been in his hands all night. 25 points a game high. Roberts at the basket and he gets fouled. Uh, that's by design. They come out, they run a misdirection for Shed with the fake handoff. Now the only thing about this, and Jawan Roberts has certainly improved offensively, still not a great foul shooter. 55% from the season. But 60 in his career. What's their best offense? Missed shot. Exactly. And listen, franchise. I know it. You've become such an astute basketball observer. <laughs> One out of two, Mitchell corrals it. Cougars with the lead by one. All right, Shed's being, he's going to guard Weaver, so he's not going to foul. Weaver lost his footing. And now Shed's on Hunter. Ace Miss looking for some space, needs some help. Finds Weaver. Weaver needs some help. Loose ball and out of bounds. And it'll be Houston basketball. I thought someone was coming into our lap. No, I was ready for you, but I know this guy, Roberts, was uh, guilty of harassment right there. Kendall Weaver's played well and has just been active down the stretch. And he's going to get a chance to keep guarding Shed. Sharp looking for Shed. Sharp. Lost it out of bounds. 16 on the shot clock. Keep an eye on Cryer here because these guys are really good out of timeouts. Excuse me, underneath. Houston trying to pick up a tough road win. Their only two losses this year are on the road in conference at Iowa State and at TCU. Cryer step back. No. Nope. Cryer leaning. 
tipped out of bounds, and it'll be Houston basketball. Very fortunate because Weaver is not letting Shed get the ball. Cryer with a miss on him, and now back to Cryer. Jumper. He's been cold. Cryer. Five for 15 from the floor. Texas down a point. And remember, it's not just Shed with the foul trouble, as well. Francis has four. Hunter step back. A little short. Rebound Roberts. Coach and point guard are connected at the hip. Three minutes to go in this one. Houston by a point. Shed with the bigger Mitchell on him. Feed inside. Well, I thought there could have been a foul there. Because as Francis tried to catch it, the defender went underneath. But both officials had a good view of this. Take a look now. Watch Francis go to get the ball and see. I think Ace Smith walked under him. Now, maybe in a game like this, you're going to let that go, but it's got to be both ways, and these officials have done that. Speaking of four fouls, Dylan DeSue back in with four fouls. This is DeSue with the basketball. He's been good here in the second half. Sue trying to find Weaver and he threw it away. Turnover. I got to give both teams credit because they've locked up defensively. And quite honestly, John, neither team can go somewhere and get an easy shot right now. It feels like they might be a little bit tired here in overtime. Uh, I would say so. This game has been played at a frenetic pace. 2.20 to go. Cryer probing, flips it up, wouldn't fall, but gets a foul call that L.J. Cryer will go to the line. L.J. Cryer, the senior from Katy, Texas. And it doesn't hurt that he's 43 and 14 in Big 12 games in his career. He's played in some big ones at Baylor. at home prior with 14 the lead is three and priors getting a piece of ace this timeout Texas Timeout, Texas. See Houston leading by three. There have been three total points scored in overtime. Houston and afternoon. All right. Great triple header, by the way. Kentucky, Tennessee, and of course, Duke Carolina in the nightcap. You buying dinner Saturday? Oh, yeah. A. Smith with Cryer on him. And now DeSue. Looking for a seam and a foul call. Good rotation from the weak side that time. And I think they just yes, got a, Javier Francis, and that's his fifth. Well, that's a good call because Javier rotated quickly, but you have to give the offensive player room to make a basketball play. So they got him for a cylinder violation, and the 18-year-old freshman Tugler will take his place. That's exactly what Kelvin's telling him. We work on this. We work on verticality. Sue, 72% from the line. 
Let's watch Francis now. When he comes over from the weak side, he gets into the uh, the cylinder, if you will, of the offensive player, and that's an easy call. The Sioux gets them both with four fouls. He'll sit as they'll go defense for offense and Shedrick back in. Two minutes to go, Houston by a point. Shed to inbound, Sharp will bring it up. And if I were Tyrese right here, I'd get in Sharp's grill, but without fouling. Oh boy. Cryer handling, Cryer. Probing, jumper, Cryer. Oh, but the flush from Tugler. Oh my goodness. The freshman followed and threw it down, and it's Houston by three. It's an assembly line of high energy big guys here. Tugler pops out. Cryer on Ace Miss. Ace Miss hangs. Hits and one! Well, John, let's watch the other end and we'll come back to, to Ace Miss. Watch the freshman now. Shot hangs on the rim. And now I love this. Ace Miss creates the contact because Cryer was not legal. And he knows he's there, and he runs right into him, and he's going to get a chance to tie this game. That's how you score 2,900 points. One of the NCAA's greatest all-time scorers, Max Aismas, 18 in the game, 70 apiece. One minute to go. This ball has to go back to Shed. Cryer jumper, short. Tugler the rebound, back to Cryer. Could have been an offensive foul on Cryer, didn't call it. Roberts inside, off the glass and in. Houston leads. Texas has one timeout left. And yeah, they take it. 32.8 to go. And the Cougars leading it by a couple. Shed with 25 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. His other big game, he had 29 against Texas Tech. Meanwhile, Mitchell and Acemas have done the damage for the Horns in the second half. Mitchell to inbound. 32.8 to go in this one. Hunter to handle. And Shed is on Acemas with 4 fouls. Ace miss. Ace miss at the basket, had it blocked, knocked away. Sharp has it, and he gets fouled. Ace miss gets downhill to the rim. Watch the challenge now. Remember what we said earlier? They're not gonna. They're letting these guys play. It's gone both ways. There's no foul. And here's the best compliment I can give Houston. When a shot goes up, I'm fairly certain that they're going to get the rebound. Watch that effort right there. Emmanuel Sharp knocks down the first 83% free throw shooter. Wouldn't be surprised if Kelvin calls a timeout here. That might be what Kellen, his son, the uh, coach in waiting, said. Gets a bold two possession game. Ace miss. Three wouldn't go. Mitchell's follow wouldn't go. And I think they just got shed. 
This is important because was he in the act of shooting? You could call this in the act. You know what happens here. He's got to make two. And then does he miss the he third has on purpose? To. He has to. Okay. Yep. I'm looking over at that Texas bench and trying to figure out which other big guy we can throw in there. Got to make two first. Ace miss first. Got it. Ace miss with 19. Houston, the Cougars try to escape. Okay, now we'll see. Here we go. The rubber meets the road here. Watch the inside jerseys of the white team if they X inside and try to cause confusion. He misses it. And a rebound, Tugler. And a foul on Texas. They should review for time here. All right, we got a clock malfunction. We're going to make sure the time's correct. Yeah, he makes a bolt. This game's done. Exactly. Emmanuel Sharp, 83% free throw shooter. And the redshirt sophomore from Tampa knocks it down. If he makes it, the game's over. If he misses it, Texas has to just throw it the length of the floor. And that'll do it. Houston comes into Moody Center and escapes with an overtime win. Time now for our player of the game, and it's brought to you by Phillips 66. And that young man, Jamal Shedd.